My name is Diane Mullins. Um, I've lived in the Miraburran district area for since I was born. Uh, this property is done loose. I haven't lived here, but it is the family property that was settled in the 1850s by my great great grandparents. So I'm the fifth generation. There are several issues within our area, certainly within in this farm and in surrounding areas. There is a granite base here on this property. There is gully erosion because the hills have been denuded in the gold rush times. There are salinity issues here on this property. There's a hard barrier below the surface, a soil area that turns into concrete-like substance, bleached concrete in summer, and in winter, it's like soup. So there are enormous productivity issues associated with those areas I just mentioned. Of course, if we have cropping, the plants go down to the moisture, and in summer, their roots are blocked by that hard substance that's below the surface. They're choked. In winter, it can be too soupy. The gully erosion causes problems because of the farmers or landholders traversing their farm from one area to the other to move stock and so forth. So of course we've tried to combat and confront these issues individually, as a family, as a collective within the Time or West Landcare Group and now Farming for Sustainable Soils. My husband and I, or my father before me, has been a member of the Time or West Landcare Group for some years. My dad is 95 and a half now and he's been in land care for over 30 years. We immediately were involved with some of the Time or West Land Care projects and we had a renew program out here, a project operating here at this property, at the Dunluce property. And that was almost a springboard for leaping into the Farming for Sustainable Soils program. I think about soil tests that we've conducted, our field trips, up to Bill Twigg's property and Grant Sims' property, learning from their practices. People coming and showing us how to conduct our own soil tests, so making us more independent in our approach to soil health. The technology area, the penetrometers, weather station, the drones that we've been using. So we're into a new world and at the same time we're sharing sharing and discussing with our members, having healthy, robust exchanges, even on the bus, back from, on the way back from Grant Sims and Bill Twigg's property. What are we doing? We're talking, talking, sharing, sharing. Oh, perhaps we could do this when we go home. Oh, look, perhaps I saw such and such. So we're learning and sharing and building. At the same time as building our farming and agricultural knowledge, we're actually building firmer, warm, relationships with each other and that's a strength for our Farming for Sustainabilities project. Not just the soil health, it's the health of the individuals involved too. Farmers, landholders, members realise that they're not alone. They are not the only ones experiencing those problems. I think we all know that when we're with another person, we share our problem, disclose what it is, we feel more content, we feel that we've got someone to share it with, some support from that person. As a collective in our group, that's what it's about. We're working together, we're not alone, we're with a group, we're with the other members, we're acknowledging each other's issues and I'm probably understanding that they're the same issues but we're working together to try and solve those issues so that we can forge ahead. The Farming for Sustainable Soils project has strengthened our community in many, many ways. Obviously, we have a much broader, deeper, sound knowledge of soil structure. Um, we have a, we've, we've learned so much from our guest speakers, from visiting other properties, so our knowledge base is much stronger. We also ha have trialled practices, so we've almost 
taking more risks, I think, in having those trials. So perhaps we've expanded our risk base too, um, trialling different ways of doing things, different practices. And then of course we come back and we share and evaluate and discuss those practices. We have social events too, where we get together. We'll have a guest speaker and a dinner. And it's those incidental conversations that are very, very fruitful, I believe. Building stronger relationships, helping landowners and farmers and other members become stronger within themselves, sharing their issues and um, acknowledging each other's issues and and highlighting the good parts, reaffirming good practices, not just the, the hardships, but celebrating the good parts of, of um, what they've achieved. So we probably can't estimate or signal how much this has improved in words. I think the fact that we've built such good partnerships within our community, with other agencies, and it's not just for now, it's for the future. We know we have a pathway. We know where we're going.